Donald Trump was elected 45th President of the United States in November 2016, after winning more electoral college votes than the favorite, Hillary Clinton. Four months before the vote, the FBI had launched an investigation into possible links between the Trump campaign and Russian officials. But the new president sacked the FBI's director James Comey in May 2017, before the investigation was complete. Then, around a week later, the U.S. Department of Justice appointed Robert Mueller as special counsel and tasked him with investigating any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump. The stakes are high. Veterans of Watergate, which brought down Richard Nixon, say collusion with Russia, if proven, would be an even bigger scandal. An enormous cast of people have been linked to the Trump-Russia story. These are the names you need to know. General Michael Flynn Michael Flynn the former U.S. Army Lieutenant General resigned as Trump's national security advisor after just 24 days because he lied about his contact with Russia's ambassador to the U.S., Sergei Kislak. According to court documents, Kislak contacted Flynn on December 28, 2016. Barack Obama was still president and had just ordered sanctions against Russia for interfering with the election. Flynn was in communication between the Russian embassy and members of the Trump transition team. After consulting with Trump's team, he asked the Russians not to escalate tensions ahead of the presidential handover. Soon afterwards, Moscow announced it would not retaliate against Obama's sanctions. When questioned by the FBI, Flynn lied about the nature of his conversations with Kislak. He later pleaded guilty to one count of making false statements and agreed to cooperate with the Mueller investigation. Paul Manafort the veteran Washington lobbyist joined the Trump campaign team in March 2016 and served as the campaign manager between June and August 2016. Manafort had a history of working for foreign leaders, including dictators Ferdinand Marcos and Mobutu Sissiko. Paul Manafort in October 2017 he was indicted over to his work for Ukraine's deposed pro-Russian president, Viktor Yanukovych. Reports suggest Manafort was in debt to pro-Russian interests by up to $17 million before he joined Trump's campaign, although a spokesman issued a denial. He was charged with nine counts, including conspiracy against the U.S., conspiracy to launder money, failing to file reports of foreign bank accounts, making false statements and failing to register as a paid lobbyist for Yanukovych. Manafort has pleaded not guilty to all charges. If convicted, he faces the very real possibility of spending the rest of his life in prison, according to a federal judge. The White House says none of the charges against him pertain to the campaign or to the White House. In February 2018, Manafort and Rick Gates were also charged with laundering millions paid to them for their work in Ukraine through offshore companies and bank accounts, failing to pay taxes, and fraudulently raising loans on property. Manafort said he was innocent, while Gates reached an agreement with prosecutors. Rick Gates, a former colleague of Paul Manafort and his deputy in the Trump campaign, he carried on working for Trump after Manafort resigned. Gates was charged with multiple counts relating to the pair's lobbying work for Ukraine. In February 2018 he pleaded guilty to one count of making false statements to the FBI and one count of conspiracy against the United States. The remaining charges against him were dropped after he entered the pleas and agreed to cooperate with the Mueller investigation. George Papadopoulos, Trump's former foreign policy advisor, has also admitted making false statements to the FBI. George Papadopoulos' court documents say Papadopoulos lied about the timing of a meeting with a professor, who he understood to have substantial connections to Russian government officials. According to court documents, the professor, later identified as Maltese academic Joseph Mifsud, told Papadopoulos the Russians had dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. This conversation took place in April 2016, about a month after Papadopoulos had begun working for the Trump team. The New York Times has reported Papadopoulos drunkenly passed on details of this conversation to Australian diplomat Alexander Downer. Australian officials then told their U.S. counterparts, triggering the start of the FBI's original Trump-Russia investigation. After Papadopoulos's guilty plea, Donald Trump tweeted, Few people knew the young, low-level volunteer named George, who has already proven to be a liar. The 13 Russians in February the Justice Department charged 13 Russian citizens and three Russian companies with conspiring to interfere with the presidential election. The 13 Russians' U.S. prosecutors say the Russians began their operation in 2014. 
Their activities are said to include traveling to America on false pretenses to collect intelligence, using the stolen identities of U.S. citizens, and conducting information warfare on social media by using fake personas. One of the companies is the Internet Research Agency, an organization dubbed the Troll Factory, over its reported efforts to spread misinformation on Western social media sites. In recent months Twitter and Facebook began notifying users who interacted with bots, trolls and propaganda from the St. Petersburg-based company, commonly known as the Troll Factory. The most high profile of the 13 defendants is the Internet Research Agency's alleged financial backer Yevgeny Prigozhin, a businessman with ties to Vladimir Putin. Alex van der Zwan Alex van der Zwan, the London-based Dutch lawyer became the first person to be jailed as part of the Mueller inquiry. Van der Zwan, who is married to the daughter of Ukrainian-Russian billionaire German Khan, admitted lying to investigators about about his contact with Rick Gates. The 33-year-old got a sentence of 30 days in prison after striking a deal with prosecutors in February, becoming the fourth person in the investigation to plead guilty to criminal charges. Richard Pinato Richard Pinato Pinato is a U.S. citizen from Santa Pale, California. He pleaded guilty to identity fraud in February 2018. Pinato has agreed to cooperate with investigators. The charges, outlined in court papers, say Pinato used the stolen identities of U.S. citizens to create bank accounts. He then sold the account numbers to people outside the country. Any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump, and any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation. In practice, Mueller is seeking to answer a number of distinct questions. Did Russia interfere with the 2016 election? This includes probing alleged so-called active measures carried out by the Russian state, including using the Internet Research Agency to target voters with false information. In recent months Twitter and Facebook began notifying users who interacted with bots, trolls and propaganda from the St. Petersburg-based company, commonly known as the Troll Factory. The Mueller probe will also be looking into well-publicized hacks of the Democratic National Committee computer network and the personal emails of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. Were these cyber exploits carried out at the request of Russian intelligence, with a view to embarrassing the Clinton campaign? Did Trump's team collude with Russia? There's no dispute that members of the Trump team came into contact with Russians during the election campaign and afterwards, but collusion, in the sense of actively working with Russia to influence the outcome of the vote is strongly denied. Trump's former national security advisor Michael Flynn has admitted he lied about contact he had with the Russian embassy and senior members of the Trump transition team. And the president's son, Donald Jr., was personally promised information about Hillary Clinton, which was clearly stated to come from the Russian government. He released messages showing that he responded, saying, If it's what you say I love it, Trump Jr. has also admitted going to a meeting at Trump Tower on June 9, 2016 with Natalia Veselnatskaya, a Russian lawyer alleged to have links to the Kremlin. Trump's then-campaign chairman Paul Manafort and the president's son-in-law Jared Kushner were also at the meeting. Did Americans launder Russian money? Manafort and a colleague, Rick Gates, have both been charged with conspiracy to launder money. Manafort denies all wrongdoing and the charges against Gates were dropped following his plea bargain. The charges we know about related to a period of time before Manafort became involved in the Trump campaign, and the president's team has consistently denied there is a connection. Did Trump try to obstruct justice? Some legal commentators think Trump is vulnerable to accusations that he tried to obstruct justice by allegedly derailing the FBI investigation. Trump fired James Comey, the man who led the probe before Mueller, and then gave conflicting reasons why. Reports say the president also tried to stop Attorney General Jeff Sessions from recusing himself from the Russia investigation, suggesting the president expected his officials to protect him from the probe. President Donald J. Trump President Trump has repeatedly denied there was any collusion between his campaign and Russian actors, calling the Mueller investigation witch hunt. There has been widespread media speculation that Mueller is looking at whether Trump tried to obstruct justice by sacking his predecessor James Comey, or by pressuring Attorney General Jeff Sessions over the investigation. Trump has said that he is looking forward to giving evidence to Mueller in person and under oath, but U.S. media has speculated that the president's lawyers are looking for ways to limit his legal risk. He could plead the Fifth Amendment and refuse to testify. 
The president has also said he would consider it a violation for investigators to start looking into his family's complex business interests, saying, look, this is about Russia. Donald Trump Jr. Donald Trump Jr. The president's eldest child famously attended a meeting with Russian lawyer Natalia Veselnatskaya at Trump Tower in New York in June 2016. Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort were also there. The meeting was arranged by Rob Goldstone, a British publicist working for Trump family friend Emma Nagalarev. In a statement released through his lawyer, Donald Jr. initially said the meeting was about the adoption of Russian children. But he later tweeted an exchange of emails he had with Goldstone, in which the Briton said Russian officials were offering to supply documents and information that would incriminate Hillary Clinton and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. Goldstone added that the information is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump. Donald Jr. replied, If it's what you say I love it especially later in the summer. He later appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee and the House Intelligence Committee, giving evidence behind closed doors. Trump Jr. said he was skeptical about Goldstone's offer of information on Hillary Clinton but felt he should hear him out. He said the phrase, I love it, I was, simply a colloquial way of saying I appreciated Rob's gesture. The president's son added, I did not collude with any foreign government and do not know of anyone who did. The White House later admitted that the president had weighed in on the writing of his son's initial statement, which made no mention of the offer of information on Clinton. Jared Kushner Jared Kushner The Washington Post has alleged that Donald Trump's son-in-law talked about setting up a secret channel of communication between the president-elect's transition team and the Kremlin. The conversation is said to have taken place in a meeting with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kisilak at Trump Tower, with Michael Flynn also in attendance, the newspaper said, citing U.S. officials who had been briefed on intelligence reports. Kushner says he and Flynn did sit down with a Russian diplomat in Trump Tower on December 1, 2016, but denies claims of a secret back channel or any other wrongdoing. In a statement to the congressional committees, Kushner said he stated our desire for a fresh start in relations and asked about how to begin a dialogue after the vote. He added, the fact that I was asking about ways to start a dialogue after Election Day should of course be viewed as strong evidence that I was not aware of one that existed before Election Day. The Russian ambassador also arranged for Kushner to meet with Sergei Gorkov in December 2016. A graduate of the FSB State Intelligence Service Academy, Gorkov is the head of Russian state investment bank Venezia Kanem Bank. Kushner said, there were no specific policies discussed. We had no discussion about the sanctions imposed by the Obama administration. At no time was there any discussion about my company's business transactions, real estate projects, loans, banking arrangements or any private business of any kind. He added, I did not suggest a secret back channel. I did not suggest an ongoing secret form of communication for then or for when the administration took office. I did not raise the possibility of using the embassy or any other Russian facility for any purpose other than this one possible conversation in the transition period. We did not discuss sanctions. Kushner said he met Ambassador Kislak for the first time at a Trump foreign policy speech at the Mayflower Hotel in Washington in April 2016. He said he merely shook hands and exchanged pleasantries with Kislak. Michael Cohen Michael Cohen The Christopher Steele dossier claimed that Cohen, Trump's personal lawyer, fixer and occasional spokesman, traveled to Prague for a secret meeting with Russian agents in August 2016. But Cohen strongly denies this, and has even shown reporters his passport. It contained no Czech Republic stamp but did show the attorney had been in Italy, part of the Schengen border free travel area, that summer. Separate reports placed Cohen in a meeting with Felix Satter and Ukrainian politician Andrei Artemenko in New York in January 2017, where a Ukraine-Russia peace deal was discussed. The New York Times claims Cohen told them he had personally delivered the proposal to Michael Flynn at the White House. But Cohen disputed the story, telling CNN, I acknowledge that the brief meeting took place, but emphatically deny discussing this topic or delivering any documents to the White House and or General Flynn. In April, Cohen found himself back in the headlines when the FBI raided his office, home and hotel room. Cohen's lawyer said Mueller had referred evidence to federal authorities in New York, who authorized the raids. He called the FBI's actions inappropriate and unnecessary. Multiple U.S. media reports, quoting people briefed on the investigation, said agents were looking for information on payments allegedly made to former Playboy model Karen McDougal and adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Both women claim to have had affairs with Donald Trump, but the White House has said Trump denies both allegations. 
Cohen has acknowledging Pang Daniels, real name Stephanie Clifford $130,000 in October 2016. He said the money came out of his own pocket and was not a campaign donation. Carter Page Carter Page Page is a former energy industry consultant with notably pro-Russian foreign policy views who joined the Trump campaign as a foreign policy advisor in 2016. He has been on the radar of federal law enforcement since 2013, according to a memo released by Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee. The memo says Page lived in Moscow from 2004 and 2007 and pursued business deals with Russia's state-owned energy company Gazprom. It appears to identify Page as a target for three Russian foreign intelligence agents charged by the U.S. authorities in 2013 with trying to recruit U.S. citizens as intelligence sources. The memo says the FBI requested a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act FISA warrant in October 2016, shortly before the election, and renewed it three times. A FISA warrant allows the security agencies to eavesdrop on American citizens in national security cases. Page has confirmed a 2013 meeting with Viktor Podobny, who was later accused of conspiring with officers from Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service. Page has said he shared basic immaterial information and publicly available research documents with Podobny. Conversations secretly recorded by the FBI suggest Page did not know the men were intelligence agents. He was interviewed by the FBI about his Russian contacts in June 2013. Two months later, in a letter detailing his academic credentials, Page said, Over the past half year, I have had the privilege to serve as an informal advisor to the staff of the Kremlin. In July 2016, Page flew to Moscow and gave a speech criticizing U.S. policy toward Russia. The Christopher Steele dossier alleges that, while he was there, Page met with Igor Sechin, the head of energy giant Rosneft and a close ally of President Putin. Page has called this absolutely ridiculous. Roger Stone Roger Stone the colorful veteran Republican strategist cut his teeth working for disgraced former President Richard Nixon before running a Washington lobbying firm alongside Paul Manafort. Stone worked on the Trump election campaign in its early stages but left in August 2015. He sent tweets and made statements that appeared to anticipate the WikiLeaks dump of John Podesta's stolen emails. Four days before Julian Assange's organization released the hacked messages, Stone tweeted, I have total confidence that at WikiLeaks and my hero Julian Assange will educate the American people soon. Stone has called the conversation with Guccifer meaningless and denied having advanced knowledge of the Podesta leak. He says he only communicated with WikiLeaks through an intermediary. In a statement to the House Intelligence Committee, he said he had no involvement with collusion with the Russian state to affect the outcome of the 2016 election. Felix Adder Felix Adder Russian-born property developer with criminal convictions to his name and a history of helping U.S. law enforcement. Satter served time for assault after stabbing a man in the neck with the stem of a margarita glass in a bar fight in 1991. In 1998 he was convicted of involvement in a fraud scheme run by the Russian mafia, but avoided prison by assisting the FBI and prosecutors. In the 2000s, Satter acted as senior advisor to the Trump Organization over the Trump Soho Hotel development in New York. According to the New York Times, he sent Trump's lawyer Michael Cohen a string of emails in November 2015 boasting about his contacts in the Kremlin. One email suggests that building a Trump Tower in Moscow would boost Trump's chances of winning the election, saying, Our boy can become president of the USA and we can engineer it. He added, I will get all of Putin's team to buy in on this, I will manage this process. Satter also reportedly attended the peace deal meeting with Cohen and a Ukrainian politician in New York in January 2017. Steve Bannon Steve Bannon, the former executive chairman of right-wing website Breitbart News, served as the White House's chief strategist for the first seven months of the Trump administration. It emerged later that Bannon helped set up Cambridge Analytica, a UK-based company that used data from millions of Facebook users. Cambridge Analytica claims it played a pivotal role in the U.S. presidential election. Bannon has admitted his involvement in the company but denied knowing anything about the Facebook mining. Multiple reports said Bannon gave 20 hours of evidence to the Mueller investigation in February. The writer Michael Wolff quoted Bannon as describing the Trump Tower meeting Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort and Russian lawyer Natalia Veselntiskaya as treasonous and unpatriotic. Bannon gave evidence to the Mueller investigation for around 20 hours, according to multiple reports, but only answered questions approved by the White House when called in front of the House Intelligence Committee. 
Hopix Hopix the former model began working for Trump in 2014 and was promoted to White House Communications Director in September last year after the departure of Anthony Scaramucci after just 10 days in the job. He quit in February, a day after giving evidence for nine hours behind closed doors to the House Intelligence Committee. She reportedly told the panel she had told occasional white lies on the president's behalf, but denied lying about the Russia investigation. Robert Mueller Robert Swan Mueller III was director of the FBI under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama, having started in the role just one week before 9-11. Like President Trump, Mueller was born into a wealthy New York family and was privately educated. He enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1968 and served as a combat soldier in the Vietnam War, winning Bronze Star and Purple Heart medals among others. As a government prosecutor, he oversaw the prosecution of the Lockerbie bombing case and notorious Gambino family mafia boss John Gotti. In 2017, he was appointed as special counsel, tasked with investigating any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump. Jeff Sessions the Attorney General angered Trump after recusing himself from the Russia investigation. Jeff Sessions Sessions had been forced to distance himself from the probe after he told U.S. Senators he had not been in, in contact with anyone connected to any part of the Russian government about the 2016 election. It emerged later that Sessions had in fact met Ambassador Sergei Kislak twice during the election campaign. Sessions recused himself from any investigation into Russian interference in the presidential election, but said that this was not an admission of wrongdoing. James Comey Obama's FBI director played a controversial role in the 2016 election campaign. He oversaw the FBI investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of private email for official communications. On July 5, 2016, the Bureau said Clinton was extremely careless in handling emails, but said no charges would be filed against her. However, on October 28, just days before the election, Comey told Congress that the FBI had begun looking into newly discovered emails. On November 6, just two days before the election, he announced that the Bureau would not be changing its original decision not to charge Clinton. Clinton herself, and some pollsters, said the decision to reopen the email investigation just before the vote had hurt her standing with voters. James Comey The FBI had opened an investigation into connections between Russia and the Trump campaign in July 2016, but Comey did not make this fact public before the election. Comey first met Trump in January 2017, when he briefed the president-elect on revelations in the Steele dossier. Comey said a tense private dinner followed. He testified that Trump told him, I need loyalty. Comey said, I replied, you will always get honesty from me. He paused and then said, that's what I want, honest loyalty. I paused, and then said, you will get that from me. Trump has flatly denied asking Comey for a pledge of loyalty, and also denies Comey's claim that the president asked him to stop investigating Michael Flynn shortly after he sacked the national security adviser. Trump fired Comey on May 9, 2017, initially saying that Attorney General Jeff Sessions and his deputy Rod Rosenstein had recommended his dismissal over Comey's conduct in the Clinton email investigation. But in an NBC interview, Trump said he was planning to sack Comey, regardless of recommendation. He added, and in fact when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, this Russia thing with Trump in Russia is a made-up story. Devin Nunes Devin Nunes the Republican head of the House Intelligence Committee is a notable Trump loyalist who has attracted criticism for his role in investigating possible links with Russia. Democrats called on Nunes to recuse himself from the House investigation into alleged Russian interference in the election in March last year. That was after he went to the press with allegations that the Trump campaign team had been indirectly caught up in surveillance by U.S. intelligence agencies. Nunes claims chimed with Donald Trump's tweets alleging that Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory, but did not prove the president right. In February 2018 the Republican-controlled Intelligence Committee released a four-page memo prepared for Nunes by his staff, which alleged that the FBI used politically motivated or questionable sources to obtain the FISA warrant on Carter Page. The claim rested on the allegation that Christopher Steele's dossier, partly funded by the Clinton campaign, had formed an essential part of the FISA application, and this was not disclosed to the court when investigators made the application. The White House approved the release despite objections from Democrat committee members and a written statement from the FBI expressing grave concerns about material omissions of fact that fundamentally impact the memo's accuracy. In response, Democrats on the committee prepared a rebuttal.
A redacted version was released, which claimed that investigators made only narrow use of information from Steele's sources when they asked for permission to put Page under surveillance. John McCain John McCain the veteran Republican senator and former presidential candidate has been one of President Trump's staunchest critics. McCain obtained Christopher Steele's intelligence dossier via an intermediary, former British ambassador to Moscow Sir Andrew Wood. McCain then passed it on to then-FBI director James Comey, saying, I received the document, I looked at it, I thought that it ought to be seen by the proper authorities and I took it immediately over to Mr. Comey, Barack Obama Barack Obama President Obama reportedly received a dossier of intelligence alleging Russian interference into the election in August 2016. He met Putin in China in September, after the cyberattack against the Democratic National Convention, and said he said he the Russian president to cut it out. In December 2016 Obama announced sanctions on Russia and ejected suspected intelligence operatives. Both Democrats and Republicans have criticized the Obama administration for not being tougher on Russia. In tweets, President Trump has variously asked why Obama didn't do something about Russia meddling, and why the previous administration started an investigation into the Trump campaign, with zero proof of wrongdoing, long before the election in November. Wanted to discredit so Crooked H would win, Sally Yates Sally Yates Yates was an Obama-era appointee who served as acting attorney general under Trump for just 10 days but she played a major role in Michael Flynn's downfall. As the official temporarily in charge of the Department of Justice, Yates told the White House that Flynn had lied to colleagues about his contact with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. She said statements by Vice President Mike Pence in defense of Flynn did not square with what they knew Flynn had done. Yates added, the Russians also knew that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others because in the media accounts, it was clear from the vice president and others that they were repeating what General Flynn had told them and that this was a problem because not only did we believe that the Russians knew this but that they likely had proof of this information. And that created a compromise situation, a situation where the national security advisor essentially could be blackmailed by the Russians, Trump sacked Gates after she refused to defend his order restricting travel to the U.S. from seven Muslim-majority countries. John Podesta John Podesta Hillary Clinton's campaign manager had his private Gmail account hacked in spear phishing exploit in March 2016. WikiLeaks dumped thousands of the stolen emails online in October that year. Private cybersecurity experts in the U.S. government believe the Russian government was behind hacks of Democratic personnel. Podesta later became the victim of Pizzagate, a bizarre conspiracy theory falsely alleging that words contained in the emails were code for child sex abuse. Fake news stories about the Podestas and a Washington pizza restaurant were widely spread online, despite being comprehensively debunked. Vladimir Putin The U.S. intelligence community believes the Russian president personally ordered an influence campaign designed to undermine public faith in democracy and hurt Hillary Clinton's chances of becoming U.S. president. Additionally, the Christopher Steele dossier claims that Putin personally endorsed a long-term plan to cultivate Trump as a way of encouraging splits and divisions in the West. Putin and other senior Kremlin figures have dismissed the allegations in the dossier as a fabrication. Sergei Kislyak, Russia's ambassador to the U.S., met with members of Trump's circle, including Michael Flynn, Jared Kushner and Jeff Sessions, during the presidential campaign. Flynn later pleaded guilty to lying about his contact with Kislyak. Sergei Kislyak and Kislyak later said the conversations with Flynn were completely correct, calm, absolutely transparent, adding, in any case, there were no secrets on our side. Sessions agreed to recuse himself from the Trump-Russia investigation after it emerged he met the ambassador twice before the election, but failed to mention this when applying for his security clearance. Kislak was also present at the Oval Office meeting with President Trump and Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, in May 2017, when Washington Post reports allege that Trump disclosed classified intelligence on an Islamic State terror threat. The president's then-National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, said the newspaper's account was wrong, saying, at no time were any intelligence sources or methods discussed and no military operations were disclosed that were not already known publicly. Aras and Emin Agalarov The Agalarovs Aras Agalarov is an Azerbaijani-Russian property billionaire. His U.S.-educated son Emin is a pop star in Azerbaijan and Russian. The Agalarovs were photographed alongside Donald Trump when they hosted the 2013 Miss Universe competition in Moscow. Emin performed during the beauty pageant, which was then jointly run by Trump, and Trump appeared in a cameo role in one of his music videos.
It was Emmons publicist Rob Goldstone who set up the June 2016 Trump Tower meeting between Kremlin-linked lawyer Natalia Veselnatskaya, Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner and others after dangling the possibility of embarrassing material on Hillary Clinton. Rob Goldstone Rob Goldstone, former British journalist who worked as a publicist for Emin Agalarev. Goldstone set up the meeting between Natalia Veselnatskaya and the Trump campaign at Trump Tower in June 2016. Donald Trump Jr. later released emails he exchanged with Goldstone before the meeting. Emin just called and asked me to contact you with something very interesting. Goldstone wrote on June 3, 2016. The Crown Prosecutor of Russia met with his father R.S. this morning and in their meeting offered to provide the Trump campaign with some official documents and information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia and would be very useful to your father. This is obviously very high-level and sensitive information but is part of Russia and its government's support for Mr. Trump, helped along by R.S. and Emin, Donald Jr. replied, If it's what you say I love it especially later in the summer. Responding to accusations of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin, Goldstone told the Sunday Times, when people said that, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. That doesn't mean that maybe there wasn't any Russian interference or Trump campaign collusion in other ways. I don't know. But I'm sure I wasn't part of it. He was interviewed behind closed doors by the House Intelligence Committee in December 2017. Natalia Veselnatskaya Natalia Veselnatskaya the lawyer and lobbyist was described as a Russian government attorney in Goldstone's emails to Donald Jr., but she denies links to the Kremlin. Veselnatskaya has campaigned against the Magnitsky Act, U.S. sanctions legislation designed to punish Russian government officials linked to the death of anti-corruption whistleblower Sergei Magnitsky. Both Kushner and Donald Trump Jr. said they were disappointed with the meeting, stating that no research into Clinton was handed over. Donald Jr. described it as a wasted 20 minutes. Christopher Steele Christopher Steele, the former MI6 Russia specialist, was the author of an explosive independent dossier that claimed Russia held compromising information on Donald Trump. Steele passed copies of his dossier to the FBI and John McCain through an intermediary. He went into hiding after his identity was revealed by the Wall Street Journal. WikiLeaks Julian Assange's group released nearly 20,000 emails that had been stolen from the Democratic National Convention, DNC, on July 22, 2016. WikiLeaks and in October and November 2016, WikiLeaks published more than 58,000 messages from Hillary Clinton's campaign chief, John Podesta. The U.S. intelligence community claims that WikiLeaks played a key role in helping a Russian cyber campaign, accusing the group of collaborating with Russian state media in the past. Annex WikiLeaks employee leaked direct messages apparently sent by Assange in November 2015 in which he called Clinton a sociopath and said, we believe it would be much better for GOP to win. Assange has denied sending the messages and repeatedly said Russia was not the source of the hacked emails. The hackers so who actually hacked the Democrats in the first place? That's still a matter of debate. In June 2016 the private security firm CrowdStrike claimed that Cozy Bear and Fancy Bear, two hacking operations allegedly backed by Russia, were the culprits. Shortly after, an individual using the name Gucci for 2.0 claimed responsibility, publishing documents apparently stolen from the DNC to back up the claim. The hackers, Gucci for 2.0 said he was Romanian and not connected to Russia, although a report claims that metadata shows the individual was familiar with the Russian language. The U.S. intelligence community believes their Russian counterparts used the Gucci for 2.0 persona, WikiLeaks and a site called DC Leaks, to release U.S. victim data obtained in cyber operations. However, a number of former U.S. intelligence operatives, including NSA official-turned-whistleblower William Binney, believe DNC data was copied, rather than remotely hacked because it was transferred, at a speed that far exceeds an Internet capability for a remote hack. The implication some have drawn from this is that it could have been an inside job by the DNC. This claim has gained traction. Reports say that President Trump even urged the CIA director Mike Pompeo to meet Vinny. But the claims are highly disputed, with many experts dismissing them as conspiracy theories. One former CIA officer told The Intercept it was, like coming out with the theory that the Japanese didn't bomb Pearl Harbor. Detailed technical analyses of the claim have highlighted flaws and say it jumps to conclusions. For instance, experts say it does not take into account the possibility that the data had already been hacked, and was copied and transferred later. Donald Trump's position on the identity of the culprits has shifted.
In June 2016 he released a statement saying, We believe it was the DNC that did the hacking, as a way to distract from the many issues facing their deeply flawed candidate and failed party leader. In July, a few days after the first WikiLeaks release, he famously said in a press conference, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. But, after that, Trump repeatedly cast doubt on the Russian hacking theory, disagreeing with the assessment of America's intelligence agencies even after he won the election. By 2017, he appeared to grudgingly accept evidence of Moscow's involvement, saying, as far as hacking, I think it was Russia. But I think we also get hacked by other countries and other people. Cambridge Analytica Cambridge Analytica The British data firm claims it ran key parts of Donald Trump's election campaign. Investigations by Channel 4 News and others revealed how Cambridge Analytica harvested data that came from around 50 million Facebook profiles, allowing it to micro-target its messaging on social media. Speaking about Trump's campaign, the company's CEO Alexander Nix told an undercover reporter, We did all the research, all the data, all the analytics, all the targeting, we ran all the digital campaign, the television campaign, and our data informed all the strategy. Another senior executive described how the company created the Defeat Crooked Hillary brand of attack ads used against Clinton during the campaign. The company has since denied using the Facebook data in the Trump campaign or the U.S. presidential election. Steve Bannon was vice president of the company until 2016, when he left to become head of the Trump campaign. And billionaire Robert Mercer, who had already invested millions in Cambridge Analytica, injected a huge amount of cash into Trump's campaign in 2016. CL Group, Cambridge Analytica's parent company, said it had signed an agreement with Donald Trump's former national security adviser Michael Flynn about possible advisory work a week before the presidential election in November 2016, but said it never actually hired Flynn. Responding to the investigation by Channel 4 News, Cambridge Analytica said it has never claimed it won the election for President Trump, adding that it is committed to assisting the Mueller investigation. CA is not under investigation, and there is no suggestion of any wrongdoing by the company, it said. Joseph Mifsud Joseph Mifsud the Maltese academic was quickly identified as the initially unnamed professor, who met Trump aide George Papadopoulos in March 2016. Court papers allege that Papadopoulos met the London-based professor after being promised dirt on Hillary Clinton in the form of thousands of emails. The same papers suggest Papadopoulos talked down Mifsud's credentials to investigators, despite knowing he had substantial connections to Russian government officials and had met with some of those officials in Moscow immediately prior to telling defendant Papadopoulos about the thousands of emails. Mifsud, who had been employed by universities of Stirling and East Anglia, admitted being the professor, but denied any wrongdoing when contacted by the Daily Telegraph, saying he had clear conscience.